In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. How to protect yourself with the right vaccinations, that's what we'll talk about today with Gerhard Falkenhorst. He's a scientist working for Germany's National Commission on Vaccination. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hello. Dr. Falkenhorst, let's get started with measles. When should you get vaccinated and how do you make sure that you have sufficient protection? In our first few months of life, we are uh, protected by antibodies that we get from our mothers during the pregnancy. So the good timing for the first vaccination is around nine months. And then you need a second vaccination after your first birthday. And with these two vaccinations, are you immune for life? Most people will indeed be immune for life, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that sounds good. Um, which other vaccinations would you say are most important to protect yourself from infectious diseases? Okay, that's uh, the uh, five-in-one injection. That's a protection against tetanus, diphtheria, polio, hepatitis B, and pertussis, the whooping cough. Mm. And then on top of that, there's a few other vaccinations, for example, against pneumococcus and uh, the hip, which are two bacteria that can cause pneumonia, and they can also cause um, meningitis. And there is the hepatitis B. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lot to remember. Yes. Um, if you want to find out more about vaccinations, you can find more information on our website. That's at dw.de slash in good shape. We've put up a list of the recommended vaccinations for you there. Well, um, there is a vaccine that might help prevent cervical cancer that's caused by the human papilloma virus or HPV. Would you recommend that vaccination? Absolutely. I think this is one of the most uh, fascinating developments we had in the field of vaccines in the last years, um, because now we really have a vaccine that can prevent cancer, as you say. And uh, this vaccine is recommended for girls around the, from the age of 11 years, uh, preferably before they take up sexual activity, because the HPV is an infection that you get uh, from sexual intercourse. Um, and that uh, vaccine is also highly recommendable. Mm -hmm. Can protect you. Well, cancer. Um, uh, recommendations for vaccinations change from time to time. The HPV vaccination is new. As an adult, how often should you get your vaccination records checked? I think it's uh, sufficient if you check your records like every 10 years. This is also the interval that you should have for booster vaccinations against tetanus and diphtheria. Mm -hmm. Every 10 years. All right. Mm -hmm. What are possible side effects when you get a vaccination? Okay, you have a reaction usually in a mild form, which is uh, around the injection site. There's swelling, there's redness, it might be tender. You might develop a little fever or from the measles vaccination, you might get a light rash that looks a little bit like a measles rash. But these things usually disappear within two, three days. Mm -hmm. With these side effects, there are some parents that might think... Um, Measles can, have, can be relatively harmless, can. Um, why should they have their children get a vaccination anyway? Well, as you said, measles can be harmless. It, indeed, it is harmless in, the, in, the, in most cases. But as we saw in the film, it can also be severe and it can be deadly. So um, we should use the opportunity that the vaccinations give us to train the immune system. It's like learning to swim. You will, you will start swimming in a, a protected environment where you can reach the ground with your feet, where you can stand so that you are not in danger. Mm -hmm. And once you have trained and you know how to swim, then you can face the dangers. And in this case, the immune system is ready to face the measles virus. Important training for the immune system. Um, briefly, um, some diseases have all but disappeared because uh, there's been vaccination programs, global vaccination programs. Does that mean I don't have to get vaccinated anymore if a disease doesn't occur in my area? Now, this is only true for the smallpox, which have really been eradicated. Other diseases like polio, for example, have become rare. But if we stop vaccinating, they will come back. So we need to keep on vaccinating and that's why they, we keep them uh, rare. Mm -hmm. Dr. Falkenhorst, we've had many, many viewers writing to us on the topic of vaccination. Um, like Max Hering, he lives in Cambodia and he would like to know which vaccinations you would recommend for his eight-year-old daughter. 
I would advise him to first of all check the website of the Ministry of Health in Cambodia, but then also look at the recommendations by the German uh, Vaccination Commission. There might be some of the more expensive vaccines that are not offered in Cambodia. And as his daughter is uh, already eight years, so he should also think about this uh, vaccination against the papilloma virus, against the cervical cancer that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's speak about vaccinations uh, for travelers. Which would you say are most important to protect yourself? Well, first of all, uh, if you're planning to travel, you should check whether your regular vaccinations are up to date. And then depending on where you go, how you travel, how long you travel, what time of the year, you need to get advice on special vaccines that are necessary, like the rabies we saw in the mm -hmm. film. So where do you go for reliable information when it comes to travel vaccinations? You should best go to a travel clinic who are specialized and who keep themselves up to date with uh, up to date information. Mm -hmm. um, traveling, well, does that mean that every businessman who travels uh, to a conference and maybe will stay in a hotel needs to get vaccinated? No, definitely not. If you're just going for a short trip, staying in the capital city, you might not need any vaccines at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, one of the major uh, threats, uh, health threats that there are when you're traveling is malaria. How close are we to developing a vaccine against malaria? That's very hard to answer because uh, there's always uh, vaccines that are in trials and there's hope that they will come to the market. But we had that, for example, 10 years ago with, a, or more than 10 years ago with a vaccine from Colombia that looked very promising. And unfortunately, in the field trials, it didn't work mm -hmm. well. So it's hard to predict when it will be ready. All right. Well, let's hope for the best. In the yeah. meantime, what can you do to protect yourself? Well, you should uh, keep uh, long-sleeved um, clothing after dark. You should sleep under a bed net. And in some countries, especially in Africa, you should take uh, malaria prophylaxis, mm -hmm. which is medicines. What, about, what can you tell us about other vaccinations that are being developed, maybe against diseases like Alzheimer's or other forms of cancer? Yeah, you're mentioning some very uh, interesting developments there because for the first time it seems that we are close to getting a vaccine that can treat diseases like cancer and Alzheimer, so not longer preventing but treating disease. Mm -hmm. But they are not yet on the market, but they are in uh, research studies. Mm -hmm. So that's something to look forward to then. Well, thank you very much for being our guest today. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Bert.